Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Funeral KRT Podcast. I am your host, your ghost host for this week, Tyler Scream. The Kit Keeper. And Cadaver Randy. And welcome to part two of our Halloween uh, shenanigan thing. Uh, We never really came up with a name for it, so. But, uh... (laughs) Despite that intro, this is not, by any means, a good Haunted Mansion movie. It's not even at the same level of the 2003 Haunted Mansion movie, and that movie sucked. It's especially fucking baffling, because it's made by one of the greatest visual effects directors of all time, but it's very clear he had to answer to every single whim of the certain guy we'll be talking about in this podcast today. (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of spooky things... That certain guy in this, believe it or not, was responsible for Thriller. And that person was Michael Jackson. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Ironic that we do the Home Alone reference given his friendship with Macaulay Culkin. He's 12 years old, dude. Get some adult friends. <sighs> Yeah, we're not going to generate any controversy whatsoever with this episode. My replies aren't (laughs) going to be snake emojis posted by people with Michael Jackson profile pics for the rest of my life. You're ruining the life he no longer even has and hasn't had for a decade. Oh no, his album sales might go from $10 million to $9 million. Oh! Ah! Oh, the horror! One streaming service removed the Stark Raving Dad episode of The Simpsons. That means it'll never be available again. Oh no, it turns <laughs> out DVDs don't exist. Ah. Okay, uh, <laughs> we are going to lose this audience as fast as we gained it. So <laughs> uh, This is going to be a fun one. <laughs> so what can we say about Michael Jackson that hasn't been said, really? Ever. Look, the guy's legacy isn't going to go away, and it's not like it would even matter at this point, because even if it was every single bad thing about him was true, he's been dead for a decade, like we said. But you have to admit that the guy did this piss-poor fucking job at proving his innocence throughout his whole life and the entire history album, but especially in this fucking movie. You know, it's such a shame that Michael Jackson came out the way he did, because he has some incredible fucking songs, as we've been discussing. Billie Jean, honest to God, is just straight up one of the greatest musical compositions, period, I have ever heard in my life. And Remember the Time is not only one of my favorite songs ever, it's one of my favorite music videos ever. It's And yeah, it's also kind of an ego trip, but it's a fun ego trip. Music-wise, lyric-wise, the guy was a genius. In every sense of the word, too, because, Randy, the song that's stuck in my head right now that you show me today was Carousel. This song was um, originally recorded for Thriller, did not make the final cut, was released on a special edition, thank God, so we all get to hear it. And to say that the songs that even he deemed not good enough for final album releases, the fact that even those songs are absolutely amazing says a lot about just the sheer musical talent that came from this guy. And it's like, look, because I know those people are probably here already typing their angry reviews. Look, if you still love the guy's legacy and his music, that's fine. He has an undeniable legacy. And you know, he's not going to profit if you still do like his music. Fine, whatever. And it's okay to still consume his music and works because, say it with me, kids, dead dead men can't make make a profit. profit. (laughs) Because of the success of Thriller and Captain EO, there was a time where it was like, okay, let's make another music video that's like a short film in its own right. So came in the most expensive music video ever made at the time, though you have to admit $15 million is like pocket change compared to the budget of most music videos today. Also, fun fact, this was originally going to be a tie-in with uh, the Adams Family Values movie. It was originally called Is It Scary? But due to contract disputes, everything fell through and they ended up shelving some of the footage. But they refilmed most of it under this title, which is Michael Jackson's Ghosts. 
And it's worth noting, too, the original cut of Is It Scary is on YouTube, and we did watch it. Um, There's really not a lot to say about it, really. The only notable thing about it is that there's a Wednesday Adams cameo from Christina Ritchie, and she's only in it for, like, five seconds before they cut to footage from the movie itself. Which, by the way, when I saw that, the first thought that came in my head was, I'll be the victim all your life. <laughs> you, you, you know, even if he didn't do what he allegedly did, let me share this quote from him that just proves how piss poor he was at making himself look innocent. He says shit like, quote, when I see children, I see the face of God. That's why I love them so much. That's what I see. Uh. No not weird human being says they see the face of children. Just be normal about your weird obsession with them. God. And if you thought that quote was terrible, the movie is even fucking worse at proving his innocence because here's how he wants to prove his innocence. Play a shape-shifting monster that lives in a giant castle all alone, uh, except for his ghost friends, and then for some reason only children trust him and the adults are terrified of him. That's not suspicious. Not even remotely. Yeah. And also he casts himself as a mouthpiece for the so-called haters. This movie is basically Michael Jackson's weird power fantasy about his fight against the parents who for some reason don't want to let him have unsupervised sleepovers with their 12-year-old children. <laughs> Like, even if it's not molestation, it's still extremely inappropriate boundaries. When you're a grown-ass man, you shouldn't be only wanting to hang around children, especially if you both your wives, if your wife just left you. Like, for God's sake, dude. The only other friend he had was Bubbles. <laughs> I just imagine in my head all the time for some reason that Bubbles just drives him everywhere and, like, puts his nose on for him and stuff, and every time I think about it, I can't stop laughing. I'm just imagining oh, no. this, this chimpanzee <laughs> driving this car <laughs> while this guy in the back talks about how ignorant everyone is. <laughs> it just turns into the movie Ed, where, like, Ed's driving the fucking truck with the drunk guy in the background. <laughs> Only this time it's even more fucking insane. <laughs> Semi-related, but I remember a Mad TV bit where they were doing, like, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy with Michael Jackson, and of course that's gonna age poorly for millions of reasons, but I remember one scene where they're apparently plucking his nose hairs and his nose comes off, <laughs> and that, I saw that as a six-year-old kid and it freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> That scared me more than anything in Ghosts ever did, so. There was this one video from 2009, uh, kind of made made sometime after his death. It's a YouTube video made by a guy called Mediocre Films, where he oh, yeah, got I a bunch him. of... Yeah. yeah, where he got a bunch of sock puppets to tell the life of Michael <laughs> Jackson, and it goes into certain details, and it has some great lines in it, like especially, whoop, your nose fell off by my nose! And also, where you been, Michael? Shopping, Daddy? What'd you buy? The Beatles! <laughs> <laughs> Is that guy still around Mediocre Films? I remember he used to make a lot of videos that went viral back in the day. Yeah, I've checked out his recent stuff, and it kind of lives up to his name, if you catch my drift. I mean, he's not a bad person or anything. He didn't go, like, alt-right or anything like that, but he he's just kind of mostly just making dumb prank videos, and they're just kind of, eh. But it's just a prank, bruh! It's just a prank! It's just a prank! You're ignorant! He says after staging a kidnapping. Ugh. <laughs> it's like, for fuck's sake, you're not Beetlejuice! It's, like... <laughs> it's just a prank, Mr. and Mrs. Culkin! Then again, given that Beetlejuice tried to marry an underage girl, yeah, yeah. maybe there's some comparisons. <laughs> so how does this film start? <laughs> First, I want to mention who directed the film. Okay, so Stan Winston is the director of this film, and he's known as the special effects artist for the Terminator series, the first three Jurassic Park films, Aliens, the first two Predator films, Inspector Gadget the movie, Iron Man, and Edward Scissorhands. He also directed a movie from 1988 called Pumpkinhead, so he's definitely got some directing experience too. He especially seems to like having opportunities where he really gets to live up to any special effects work, and it almost always pays off, although, love you Stan, and I miss you dearly, but um... This ain't it, man. 
the dude didn't know how to say no. <laughs> like, I don't think he wanted to make a film this fucking inane and this fucking self-indulgent. I think that he just had, unfortunately, he was afraid to not answer to the fucking king of pop himself. If the paycheck's big enough, man. Considering the power Michael Jackson had back then, it kind of makes sense. I would say. Oh yeah, like, like you you get the opportunity to work with him. You're basically not going to say no. It's like all the people who likely said yes to Francis Ford Coppola's Jack, which is a story within itself. Well, speaking of Captain EO. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> oh boy. Either say yes to working with Michael Jackson or piss off his cult. Also worth noting is that this film's also written by Mick Garris, who is also the writer for, get ready for this one, guys, Fuzz Bucket. <laughs> Oh, God. That explains <laughs> so fucking much. And he was also the director of a lot of not great Stephen King films, but also the writer of Hocus Pocus, which, honestly, I trust the Sarandon sisters more than Michael Jackson's character in this movie. And speaking children. of Stephen King, this film was actually paired in theaters with the movie Thinner, which I've actually never heard of until recently. I want to say I am so sorry to Olaf's Frozen Adventure for ever complaining about it. If I lived in the UK in the 1990s and I just badly wanted to go see Thinner and then I had to sit through this goddamn garbage, <laughs> I sincerely apologize to Olaf's Frozen Adventure. <laughs> A friendly reminder that Michael Jackson's ghost clocks in at 40 minutes. <sighs> And Thinner clocks in at 92 minutes. Fucking, I could imagine myself sitting through the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy better than this. <laughs> at least Endgame was entertaining. Ugh. Like, the whole way through. Ugh. How do we even want to begin with how this opens? Oh, Welcome man. to Normal Valley. The site said <laughs> Normal Valley. Get with regular it. people. <laughs> Subtlety. They're just bopping you over the head with this fucking symbolism, and it hurts. They straight up just wanted to be the fucking kill the beast scene in Beauty and the Beast. That's what they fucking wanted it to be. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, the late 90s, when angry parents held torches like some sort of medieval angry mob coming for the head of the king. Yeah, so that's where the movie starts. Well, this is more of a short film, but anyway, that's where this starts, and apparently, so some of the dialogue includes... Why do we have to come after him? He didn't do anything wrong. And that's coming from one of the child characters. Yeah. And one of the fucking kids fucking tells the kid, way to go. That's what you get for telling on him. Ah! No. No. I quit. I quit this podcast. No. I <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm saying. <laughs> it's followed by the, the kid's mother slapping him over the head for saying that. And that's a running gag. In the first five minutes of this, that was that was the first sign that I would I was not going to have a good time watching this piece of shit. Yeah, the, the running gag is basically the lady says, don't hit your brother while hitting the kid over the head. I know this movie doesn't have a kill count, but part of me just wishes that Michael would have just dragged her straight to hell. <laughs> that would have given it some rights. You would think Michael Jackson, having faced abuse from his father as a child, would be a little more sensitive to this kind of thing. For fuck's sake, ugh. You know, I actually was reading Nathan Raymond's review of this movie, and he said at one point, you know, maybe if this had come out a decade earlier, it would have been believable that this maybe was a response to his dad and everybody who abused him as a child and didn't let him have a childhood. Which, sure, fine, I could get that. It would still wouldn't be great, but it wouldn't be fucking infuriating given the subject matter. Ugh. Yeah, because now at this point, doing this in 1997, it comes off like, as I said earlier, a power trip against the parents of the kids who thought it was weird that Michael Jackson wanted to hang out with them unsupervised. And then, of course, there's the mayor that's just Michael Jackson in really bad white face makeup. I do want to admit, I didn't realize that was him at first. Those prosthetics you know... are pretty okay, even though he looks basically exactly like Roger Ebert. I just really <laughs> wanted the Roger Ebert mayor to just start yelling deedles, deedles at him until he finally disappeared. <laughs> just a heads up, there is probably some universe where Michael Jackson's Meet the Deedles is showing on a loop in hell. <laughs> <laughs> this is for not giving Moonwalker a thumbs up! <laughs> 
I, I don't... I actually don't know what Roger Ebert's thoughts on Moonwalker are. I'm just assuming. <laughs> that bit from the Puzzle Place episode that we watched with uh, the Roger and Ebert parody, but they're talking about Michael Jackson's ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a thumbs up. No, I give it a thumbs down. I... <laughs> He really walked that mood. <laughs> oh god, know. speaking of Moonwalker, as I was watching this movie, I was like, oh my god, this movie has me praising the shit out of Moonwalker. Moonwalker's how you how you do an ego trip completely right. Like Moonwalker was actually fun to sit through. Moonwalker was that was was Moonwalker a self-indulgent power trip? Yes. But it was a self-indulgent power trip that focused on his achievements as an artist, that focused on his music and his videos. And that time he won eight Grammys in one night, which is impressive. Also- Yeah, there was that. Okay. It, it was just entertainingly stupid and batshit and crazy. And it really is one of my favorite stupid movies of all time. <laughs> this is just- Yeah, and compare that to Michael Jackson's Ghost. As good as the choreography is, it's just so- tedious to sit through it feels like it just drags on and drags on there's nothing in this movie that you even the good elements that you couldn't get in a million better products he made for god's sake like moonwalker has a bunch of different segments with different shit going on here in ghost you're just stuck in the same setting watching ghosts dance around and that, and yeah of course that's cool at first but then it just kind of gets old especially when it's matched with michael's just like, oh, look how good a person I am. Just patting himself on the back the whole time. It's just... Moonwalker, at the very least, makes you think about all his achievements as an artist. And when you watch this power trip, you're mostly thinking, oh, wow, this guy really is talented. You remember his work in the Jackson 5 and Thriller and We Are the World? You watch this and all you can think about is the time he dangled Blanket off a balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Moonwalker, he was kind of basically allowed to make at that time because he was kind of allowed to be arrogant because, hey, he came off of a life of child abuse and he came off of a really hard life. So yeah, seeing his success, especially as a black artist in the 80s, was huge. Like, holy fuck, this was- We do have to remember about him one thing. He did basically break MTV's color wall. Like, MTV would not show black artists for the good first part of its existence until they were just in instantly forced at, yeah, at one like, point to show. I think it was Billie Jean. They were forced to show it, and then, bam, that color wall was just knocked right down. So yeah, at that point, you're kind of allowed to have your big, basic Lawrence of Arabia and act like you're the Jesus figure of the world. But then in the 90s, when you're just fucking coming off of a case, even one where you, where you basically won, you're basically proving that maybe you shouldn't have. Maybe the ego trip can wait. <sighs> <sighs> God. <Okay>. Anyway. Uh <laughs> Yeah, this went places. So, yeah, the Michael Jackson, Roger Ebert mayor is like, he's different than us. He's a freak. Way to ham it. Ham. <laughs> ham. <laughs> we, I don't know why Michael Jackson made this movie. He should have just beat up every member of the audience and said, stop calling me wacko jacko. Hee hee. <laughs> he just grabs his crotch and just dances in front of everybody and everybody's just like, okay, we'll stop, please. <laughs> also, I got to mention, so one of the angry mob members is none other than Most Deaf. Huh. Huh. Yeah, he's in this. Yeah, and it's like, uh, it's too bad that he's not given too much to do in this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, nobody in this movie except for Michael Jackson was given anything to do. The fact that only he's listed as a cast member on the Wikipedia page kind of tells you everything. The angry mob and the kids just, like, pretty much just are there, whereas the only two- They're pretty much just props for a majority of the, the movie. The only two characters who have, like, any existence are the mayor- and the maestro. Guess who both of them are played by? Oh, gee! Is it the guy who owns Bubbles? <laughs> Lionel Richie! Yay! Oh my god, yes! <laughs> or that guy who was making all the fake Michael Jackson tracks and then releasing them and saying, Oh, these are totally unreleased songs! <laughs> oh wait, you know what? I thought it was Michael Jackson's stunt double for from that biopic where he 
where his hair catches on fire from the Pepsi ad. <laughs> oh, jeez, that movie, The Jacksons, An American Dream. I forgot who was in that. But one little super quick fun fact about that little biopic. Catherine Jackson, the mother of all the Jackson boys, is played by none other than Angela Bassett. <gasps> Holy Ooh, shit! Okay. Yep. Wow. <laughs> so back to the terrible oh, one. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> the angry mob goes to the house... The mayor is like, oh, he's a freak. He doesn't belong here. We don't like freaks, which is like, way to be subtle, dude. So they go into this, like, ba it's the Haunted Mansion. It's literally just the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, basically. Then he finally comes out, and then he's just like, <laughs> did I scare you? And for some reason, the kids are like, ah, ha, ha, he's so funny. It's like, I'd be pissing my fucking pants around this guy. Yeah, because what he does is it's basically a jump scare where he's in a Skeletor mask. Did I scare you? <laughs> <laughs> I I am not nicer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not the first use of skeletons in this movie, as we'll later get to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so basically the mayor is just roasting the ma the maestro even more. And he's basically calling him like a, a freak and a circus freak and shit. Like that, that's all he called. And that's that's the only insult he uses. He's like, oh, you're a freak. You're a circus freak. Freak boy. Freak. You're not normal. That's all he says. <laughs> we want you out of town. We have a nice normal town. Normal people. Normal kids. We don't need freaks like you telling them ghost stories. God, and as if they couldn't get more fucking... They can't decide whether they want him to be a horror figure or, like, this Christ-like figure. So they have him in, like, the standard white shirt, black pants, so then they can be like, uh, he's totally both. Like, yeah, he's scary as hell, but you're also supposed to worship him, guys. This is literally just what he wore in the black or white music video. They just went through the closet and said, <laughs> okay, this'll work. <laughs> God's sake, the black or white video worked better as a horror movie. The black or white video wasn't 40 <laughs> minutes long. Oh, man. The black or white video <laughs> okay, had the so... Simpsons in it. Yeah! Oh my god, yes, that's right. I guess that's what paved the way to uh, Stark Raving Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a legitimately good episode of The Simpsons, just saying. And by the way, there is actually a recording of Michael Jackson himself singing Happy Birthday, Lisa. So go look for that if you want to hear that. Yay! Anyway. Okay, so back to the movie. So basically the maestro and the mayor and the parents bicker for a few minutes. And then Michael's like, hey, how about I scare you guys? Do you want me to scare you? How about we play a game, you guys? Just, I'm, I'm making it worse than it probably sounds, but just me saying that makes me uncomfortable. God, it's literally not fucking, fucking easy to sit through. It's like... <laughs> and can we talk about the fact that Michael basically manipulates the, the townsfolk in this whole, during this whole short? I'm pretty sure he's manipulating yeah. the audience, too. <laughs> he is! We're jumping ahead, but so basically this this whole short is supposed to be painting it as no, the mayor's wrong and the maestro is right. But literally everything that the maestro does is just he scares the town folks. He literally possesses the mayor and drives him insane. And we don't know if he dies or not, but I'm assuming he does. Like literally all you guys are doing in this movie is just proving that the maestro is the bad guy and that we should be protecting the kids from him at all costs. Oh, gee, I can't possibly imagine why these parents don't want their kids hanging out in an abandoned old mansion with this 40-year-old man who does magic tricks. It's basically like Gaston if he wasn't a prejudiced incel and he fucking wasn't trying to convince the town people to go after someone the girl he rejected him clearly cares about. It's like, fuck's sake, there's just so much that doesn't make... And then they're like, oh, the maestro was totally like the beast, except we're going to give you tons of reasons not to root for him. Ugh. Also, it's worth mentioning, too, because we watched the behind the scenes thing. The way Michael describes the mayor in that pissed me the f it just so basically I'm paraphrasing here. But what he says is I play that fat, ugly, grotesque mayor who doesn't see the beauty of the inside of a person. Fuck you. Motherfucker, you just fat shamed him. You do not see the this this fat this fat gross disgusting mayor, and he can't see that peep that that beauty is on the inside. You just contradicted yourself like, in like the first <sighs> few words of your sentence. You are Michael Jackson's personal problems aside. What point are you trying to prove there? 
like it's basically like what Shrek was trying to do with Lord Farquaad, where they basically shame him for being short the whole time. When that's basically yeah. no, the joke is that he's evil. It's not that he's like God. I I hate I hate this short. I really do. It's like God's sake, and you can tell that this whole thing is just like the like half of history is just him on this distract attorney against the fucking DA in the case. <laughs> like, for God's sake, you won! Just shut up already! Yeah, you Good won, God, he you... won the case! Why is he still mad? <laughs> he's got- he's such a fucking egotist that he can't hand- God, he's like the fucking president! That's how bad he is. Ironic given his opinion of Donald Trump, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, we, we really don't know what his true opinion on Trump is. I've only ever seen pictures of him hanging out with him at the Taj Mahal in the 90s where he looks uncomfortable, but, like... I mean, there was one point where, like, one... I forgot which of his fucking kids it was. They're all basically the same to me, but... Where he was like, oh, Michael Jackson didn't really want to spend time with my dad. He always wanted to spend time with us. Back away slowly. Yeah. I'm just gonna, <laughs> uh... Yeah, we're just gonna end the podcast here. Okay. All right, we've been canceled, everybody. Come on, we have no sponsors, no nothing. Well, unfortunately, once we start this movie, we gotta finish it. As much as we don't Do want to have to. You know what? Yeah. You're right. This is a free country. Podcast over. All right. <laughs> Implying this is a free country. Okay, on the spot, we're coming up with a new Halloween topic. We're just quitting. We're just quitting this and just jumping into something new. No research, nothing. Dinosaurs aren't they cool? Yay! Oh, shit, Stan Winston <laughs> worked on that, too. <laughs> so then it finally gets to, I guess, what we came for. So he just fucking starts stretching his face and trying to scare all the adults. And it just looks stupid. I'm sorry. It's like, it's like okay, we get it. Stan Winston was just like, you <laughs> know what? I got Michael Jackson's money. I don't really need to put any real effort into this. He's going to like it no matter what. <laughs> it's the 90s. I can just say, oh, the technology's limited. Basically, what they're doing is just, I guess what I could say here is that their rationalization was that, oh, the mask was popular at the time, so why don't we just do what they did and just have him mug at the camera and we'll have him stretch his face out. It's like the mask did great cartoon effects. Like, every single effect in that movie looks straight out of a cartoon, and it looks and it looks really great. And fucking this movie, meanwhile. I'll definitely save this for the inevitable mask animated series episode, but... Like, the, the effects in The Mask, at least, aged so well compared to this. When Jim Carrey stretches his face, it's funny and cartoony. When Michael Jackson does it, I piss myself. It just looks like shit. It's scary. When Michael Jackson <laughs> does it, I want to call the police. Also, there's a, there's a bit where Michael Jackson stretches his jaw. And I'm just going to get the Artemis Fowl joke out of the way here. Michael Jackson walks so Mulch Diggums could run. <laughs> there, you happy? <laughs> Honestly, when I saw that, I was like, oh, great. Now he's reenacting the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Yet another artist I would have loved to see more movies from. Pink Floyd. Why couldn't it be Pink Floyd's ghosts instead? Right? Roger Waters would have done amazing. <laughs> Pink, Pink Floyd would definitely do a better job at a horror movie than this. Like, can you imagine how amazing that would have turned out? Imagine a 40-minute horror movie done by Pink Floyd. That would have been the trippiest shit, and it would have been amazing. Like, you've seen the shit they've done in The Wall. Like, imagine that tenfold. Imagine a Wish You Were Here movie. Literally, it would have been a beautiful metaphor against the shitty politics of the 80s, as well as overcoming drug abuse. It'd be beautiful. Not fucking, eh, I'm innocent. It, it, it wouldn't be about why won't parents let me hang out with their kids unsupervised in an abandoned <laughs> mansion. I can see, want... I can just see Michael Jackson wherever he is in the afterlife yelling at us going, you're missing the point! <laughs> <laughs> Also, insert South Park joke here. <laughs> you know the one. I'm a little boy, oh, yeah. baby. Uh, also, side then, note, how old were you guys when you found out that Kenny was supposed to be Blanket's replacement in that episode before they killed him? 25. 25. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm getting on a bit of a tangent here, but the way they just nonchalantly did that and you didn't even realize that it was Kenny until Stan says the catchphrase, that was clever let's play blanket no 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 wait i'm not blanket we oui, he can fly he can ah! fly ah stop oh. oh my god he killed kenny you bastard
bastard! <laughs> that was better writing than anything in Ghosts, so. You know, goddamn South Park, you did something right for once in your life. <laughs> And now I have to take a shower because I feel even more dirty. And then they finally get to, like, the big fucking dance sequences. And, well, he basically traps them all in the castle. And it's like, oh, you're my guest. Please stay. Again, something a rational human being would do. He's totally innocent, you guys. Honest. Why don't you believe him? So this is the late 90s, keep in mind. In the late 90s, not everybody... But at least, like, one in five people had a some sort of cell phone. Someone could have called the police. <laughs> yeah, literally. If this was made in the 2000s, I feel like what they would have done, like, they would have hand-waved it by, oh, let me get my phone out, and then Michael just snatches it from them, like, telepathically or some shit. <laughs> like, that's, exactly. what I'm, that's what I'm picturing in my head. No phones, we talk to each other. Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee! <laughs> society! Ow! You know, I don't get why the, the why if the mayor was so concerned about getting everybody away from him, why didn't he just say, yes, I'm scared. Okay, let's go. It's like, did Michael just control his mental abilities too and was just, or was just that sadistic? Was like, no, I gotta scare him. It's like. There are just so many reasons why the mayor should have just said fucking just go on the town on the maestro or Michael or whatever, whatever the fuck his name is. By the God. way, Tyler. Tyler, I think you meant we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Randy. <laughs> so yeah, Michael Jackson is now uh, has now created a hostage crisis, which is uh, considered a war crime. And he summons so what he calls his family, which is just a whole bunch of ghosts, which just raises questions about who is the maestro exactly and how does this work? Like, is he a ghost? Is he a demon? Is he... Like, what is he? I don't I don't get this. This is just has plot holes galore. It's basically like they just wanted a new Freddy Krueger like character, and which would be even more of a way to prove that you are just the fucking worst at proving your innocence. Yeah. Oh, which speaking of, when he does this little one liner when he's introducing the other ghost, he's like, Meet the family. I, I half expected him to go, Meet the family, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying earlier the makeup for the mayor character was good. Not so much with the ghosts. Like, this this is really easily one of Winston's weakest works. Like, I feel kind of bad for saying it because he he was phenomenal in so many things, even things I wasn't a big fan of. But, like, this just... Maybe it was just the lighting in this movie looking like complete shit, but... Yeah, everything's just shrouded in complete darkness the whole time. Like, there's no bright colors to keep you distracted or anything like it's not like the adams family house or something where there's just colors at every turn and it's actually kind of a morbid kind of fun but yeah like to elaborate on that there's like only a single set ever used in this movie ever it's just like the big front room and like there's there's nothing else it's not a fun house to be in what are the kids even seeing in this guy like literally all he does is jump scare people and just fucking fucking be annoying it's like after a while i'll just be like okay dude it's getting old michael jackson presents <laughs> drop dead fred <laughs> honestly rick myel actually would have pulled all this off Oh, we can't stop hanging out with this weird dude now or else he's just going to call us ignorant. Okay, one more mask-related tangent. Hear me out. Rick Mail as the mask. <gasps> yes! UK mask. If he became big in America, he would have definitely gotten that role. I'm just saying. Oh, like he had, He had the chops for it, like, completely. I definitely do want to do something with Rick Mail in it at some point on the show, so we'll see. Then there's also... Uh, so then the dancing begins, and I'll admit, Is It Scary is actually a pretty good song, and Ghost isn't a bad song in its own right, divorced from context, but... Too Bad is fucking amazing. I love that song. Too Bad, yeah, Too Bad's a, a banger. Yes, Too Bad's great. <sighs> but then fucking, it has to go on and on and on, and it's like, it's just a bunch of greatest hits, but not nearly as impressive of him. So then the dancing, I guess, is a fine, but it's like, I just keep thinking, there are so many better videos of his I could be watching right now. We could be watching Thriller! 
<laughs> Thriller is basically ghosts done right. Yeah. The funny thing is, I was watching the BTS of this, and Michael basically said he wanted to make something that could top Thriller. Which, first of all, you can't top Thriller. You really can't. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Oh. I, oh, Michael. I mean, I'll say this much. At least Stan Winston didn't get anybody killed on the set of a movie like John Landis. I, I but... mean, the only bad part, the only <laughs> bad part of Thriller is the guy who directed it. But <laughs> yeah, other than that, Thriller is basically as perfect as a music video can get. And to try and top that would be futile. You have Vincent Price narration throughout it. How can you fucking top that? The Virgin Ghost versus the Chad Thriller. <laughs> Oh, the only scene I like with the titular ghosts isn't even a part where they're dancing to a Michael Jackson song. It's the part where they're actually dancing on the walls to, like, the original score of the movie. And it's actually a really cool scene. Like, we're making Haunted Mansion references galore. That reminded me a lot of something you would see in the actual ride. It's basically a Halloween version of dancing on the ceiling. It's what a Haunted Mansion movie should have been. Literally. Fuck, even Haunted Mansion Holiday was scarier than this. Hot take, Haunted Mansion Holiday is not that bad, actually. Honestly, yeah, I actually like Haunted Mansion Holiday. I think it's cute. If they made it a separate ride. If they literally just held off for doing it for like a month, like just put it up in November, that would be okay with me. Like Tony said in his haunted mansion video like people just want to ride that during halloween the original ride not haunted mansion holiday yeah if you guys can't tell we're talking about better things because we don't want to talk about this and plus most <laughs> of this movie is just just the same fucking dance sequence over and over again and then a fucking scene where he jumps into the mayor character after another fucking too long dance sequence and then just turns into a xenomorph basically then starts making the fucking <laughs> mayor dance and shake his ass which again not Oh, Kitty, the way that scene plays out kind of makes it look like Vor. Like, he literally puts a finger down the mayor's mouth and he just jumps right in. It's terrible. It's such a terrible image. And I'm sure that it did something for somebody. <laughs> and then there's one dance sequence where right in front of everybody, it looks like he just stripped all his clothes off, but now he's a skeleton. <laughs> Which, way to make yourself look innocent by stripping in front of a bunch of kids. <laughs> something, something, Papyrus Undertale. Michael Sanson. <laughs> <laughs> which, by the way, that skeleton CGI was terrible. Ugh. I mean, it was done with motion capture, which is a pretty cool achievement for the time. But, like, when you get, like, close-ups of it, it just looks like a PlayStation 2 cutscene. Like, this was five years after Army of Darkness. There's no excuse. Uh, one part of the behind the scenes that I really didn't need to know was that they took a digital picture of Michael Jackson's head, basically, and shaved it down to skeletal, you know. Yeah, what was skeleton. that? Skeleton. So, what, <laughs> so now we know what Michael Jackson's internal organs look like. What the hell was that about? Just make a regular skull. Just set his hair on fire again. Just fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, just sit Guar on him. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put Pepsi on my head! <laughs> and there's also this, there's also a weird bit after one of the dance scene where, like, an angelic choir plays and the ghosts slowly start to rise down together behind Michael. That's really subtle, you guys. Uh, Man of Steel was more subtle than this. <laughs> Fucking shit. It's Darren Aronofsky's more fucking subtle with his religious references than this. Just, God, we get it. He views himself as a Christ-like figure. Decide whether he's supposed to be scary or actually not scary, for God's sake. So yeah, as you guys mentioned, he possesses the mayor. I, I, forget, I forget exactly why, but... But before that, he transforms into a demon, basically. Mm -hmm. And we get to see what his hell face looks like. And that makeup was pretty terrifying. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like, <laughs> if it would just been mostly that, that could have been pretty good. And then, <laughs> then of course, one of the fucking ghosts is Harley Quinn for some goddamn reason. <laughs> like, I know it's just like a Harlequin medieval jester, but we see something like that, we're, we're going to reference Harley. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Simpson. Everyone's Harley Quinn. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just wanted an IV ghost to show up and just be like, let's get out of here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he possesses the mayor and he makes him dance. By the way, in all of the dances he does, there's always a crotch grab. Every single sequence. Every fucking sequence, there's a crotch grab, and it's just like, subtle. It's like that scene in Shrek 2. <laughs> Could you not grab your crotch for five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a bunch of scenes where he just yells, ha! Well, before dancing, <laughs> while calling all the ghosts, and it's like, okay, we get it. <laughs> What the fuck did you just call me? <laughs> Way to use gendered slurs, dude. Ugh. That's the worst thing he's ever done. <laughs> Obviously. Oh my god, I have a theory. The reason Michael Jackson has such a crazy fan base, he's possessing all his fans themselves. Oh my god, he actually is the maestro oh and he's god. possessing them. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so much. The guy's just secretly in everything. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, he does possess the mayor, and they do the they do the dance sequence, and then it cuts to the mayor being forcefully transformed into a demon himself, <laughs> and then a fist breaks out of his stomach like in a, a Slim Jim commercial, with a mirror <laughs> attached to it, and he's basically just holding it to his face and saying, "Are you the freak now? You scared yet?" You're the freak now, freaky boy. Say freak one more fucking time. <laughs> if the maestro is literally trying to prove that he's the good guy in this situation, he is terrible at it. Michael Jackson presents the thing. <laughs> Why? What are you trying to prove? Like, you're just fucking... You're just... He's given no fucking reason the kids should trust him. It's like, again, if the metaphor was, I didn't get to live my childhood, so I have done some things I'm not proud of, but I do need to get help. There, win your case, go get therapy, fucking get your shit figured out. They end. Nobody will ever fucking leave you alone ever again. But no. Like, at least make the mayor some sort of an asshole intentionally. Like, the whole time, like, I'm just rooting for the mayor because he is reasonably upset and worried for his townspeople. He's just doing his fucking job. He actually gives a shit. Yeah, but they have to, like, phone it in with him constantly going, Fool, he's a freak, circus freak, freak boy, yo, you're a freak, you're different, we don't like different. That, I'm pretty sure that's not why the mayor is upset, but, you know, Michael Jackson's playing the mayor, so. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the mayor does get scared away because Michael Jackson does like another scary makeup face or oh, whatever. Before that, I guess he doesn't successfully scare the mayor. And he's like, oh, so you want me to go? And the mayor's like, yeah, that's what we want. And he's like, fine, I'll go. And he starts like banging himself against the floor, <laughs> dissolving into like sand like it's Infinity War. <laughs> While and this is supposed to be a sad scene. Bubbles, I don't feel so good. <laughs> oh, by the way, fun fact to add on that Infinity War joke, um, Michael Jackson was going to play Spider-Man in a movie at one point, so... Oh, no. Not a joke. <laughs> That's some meta-ass <laughs> bullshit there. No. You know, for some reason, a man in his 40s just didn't cut it as 16-year-old Peter Parker. Why? I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then only the fucking kids mourn him because of course and they're like oh he took away our friend and then they're just trying to put him back together and I'm just like ah, make it stop it's, it's, it's like this is supposed to be a sad scene but he's just like dust now and then the mayor is like alright let's get out of here and they're leaving and then they open the door and there's a giant demonic Michael Jackson face going are you scared now and I shit myself fucking screams and runs away with a bunch of ghosts flying around him and then they all go home stupid oh, as hell yeah, I gotta point this out too the way he jumps out of the window is such a stupid gag because after he jumps out of the window, it cuts to a reaction of the townsfolk as he jumps out of the window, and then it cuts back. It's like silhouette of his body in mid-fright or whatever, like a like a fucking. It's like Roger scene. Rabbit after he ran out the window. <laughs> I'm just expecting Porky Pig to show up and say, uh, th 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 "That's all, folks." <laughs> Knowing Michael Jackson, he probably wanted that. You know, I'd probably actually like that if that was added in. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
afterward, he's like looking at everyone. He's like, did we have a good time today? And he, everyone's just like, ah. <laughs> and then he and then he yells at them. He's like, did we? And then they're like, oh, like, oh, yes. Yeah, we did, Michael. <laughs> so again, they're being manipulated into saying yes. Did we have a good time here? Hello? Oh, there's one last scare. They're all pointing behind Michael Jackson. And he's like, wait, what's what's going on? And then right behind him is this big skeleton. And then he gets scared. But it was the kids in a skeleton mask. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Hate. I hate hate. this movie. Hate, hate, hate. Oh, and there's also one more scare where one of the kids is like, hey, do you guys want to see something scary? And then he puts his hands up to his mouth like this, and then it just cuts away, and you hear everyone screaming. He ripped his jaw off. No, that kid just straight up shot everybody. So at this point, I'm just assuming that the kid is possessed by some sort of demon. So that's even more reason to keep your kids away from Michael Jackson. <laughs> Literally, like if you're trying to prove your fucking innocence again, why are you having these kids get possessed? Fuck. <laughs> Uh, the face of God. Fuck you, Michael. Fuck you. People with normal feelings about children don't say they see the face of God in them. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <sighs> and that was ghosts. I think it goes without saying that we're gonna have to not only burn the tapes, but just straight up destroy them. Burn the tapes. Fucking exercise them three times. Burn the remains. Burn everything of this movie. Go back in time. Prevent it from being played in front of Thinner. Fuck. Just prevent it from being made, period. Just, just not even once. Go back in time. Tell Stan Winston, dude, you can say no to things. It's okay. Just say no to <laughs> this. Ev no to this. <laughs> burn every film reel. Burn every tape. Burn every DVD, burn every YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> and for fuck's sake, prevent those kids from fucking, like, let's go back in time and tell those kids, actually, no, that guy is bad and your parents are right. Except for the mom who beat her kid. She can die. You want a good Michael Jackson short film? Go watch Captain EO. Literally, Captain EO is right to the point, isn't 40 minutes long, and is fun. It's a fun movie. I would also go to the kid in the beginning who keeps getting hit up the head by his mom and say, Hey dude, uh, you should probably call CPS. Literally! Or at least run away. <laughs> I feel like CPS is a better answer than Michael Jackson. <laughs> so, burn the tapes. If you want to watch a good Michael Jackson movie, go look for Captain EO or Moonwalker. Not this. <laughs> <laughs> or even The Wiz! The Wiz is awesome! Yeah! The Wiz is at least stupidly fun. It has great music. It has Diana Ross, Lena Horne! Okay, so plug time, everybody. Uh, what do we have to plug this week? I'm Mission Breakout on Twitter, a walking pun on Instagram, and basically a mold of flesh everywhere else. All right, you can find me on my main account, Cosmic Rewind, but with a three instead of an E. You can find me on No Context Harley Quinn and No Context TGIF, which I know there has been a bit of a gap and they have been a bit inactive, but I will get back to those. Same thing with my uh, No Context The Mask page. I'm slowly but surely getting back into posting content with that. It's just been, I've been busy with a lot of other things, such as this podcast. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TylerFG, Instagram at TylerFG96. And you can also find us on Twitter at channel underscore KRT, which you can see all of our posts. And we also have a link tree in our bio, which will give you more to look through. And uh, you can also find us on Apple Podcasts. Be sure to rate, like, and subscribe. It just helps us get noticed by the algorithm better. And uh, uh, for our next episode, I'm going to leave a hint. Let's just say that there will be <laughs> anger, but not the bad kind of anger. It'll mostly just be playful fun, and it'll be our first guest episode. So have fun guessing what that episode's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's our annual mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Funeral KRT, cut to thunder.
<laughs> I'm sorry, Vincent Price. I can't laugh like you. 